Welcome to Developing with DocuSign. I'm Carissa Jacobson, a member of the Developer Center team. In this screencast, I'll demonstrate how to set up and use the DocuSign sample app, MyConnect Webhook. I'll show how to use the source code from GitHub to configure the app locally for use with your own developer account, and walk through how to create a DocuSign Connect configuration for the app to receive webhook notifications. MyConnect Webhook is a Ruby on Rails application which uses React on the front end. The prerequisites for setting up this app for local development are a free DocuSign developer account, a DocuSign integration key, which I'll show how to create and configure in this video, Ruby 3.1.2, and Node version 16 or higher. This app utilizes a variety of DocuSign features, including JSON Web Token, or JWT, authentication, bulk sending of DocuSign envelopes, elastic templates, remote signing, and more. However, the main focus of this app is the DocuSign Connect webhook service. For this app, we will use a Connect 2.0 configuration. DocuSign Connect is a service that sends out notifications when specific events are triggered in your DocuSign workflows. This service is especially useful when your application needs to quickly react to DocuSign events. In order to utilize this service, you need to set up a webhook listener that is available on the public internet and create a DocuSign Connect configuration in your account where you can specify which events to subscribe to and what information is included in each notification. In this video, I'll walk through how to do both of these things. You can learn more about DocuSign Connect at the link displayed on this page. Before I continue, I want to let you know that all of the data you'll see is temporary test data that was created just for this demo in a sample developer account. All accounts and sensitive information used in this demo have been deleted, disabled, or revoked. You can find MyConnect webhook here on the sample apps page of the Developer Center, along with all our other sample apps, which showcase various programming languages, technologies, and industries. Here you can see there is both a link to try the publicly hosted version of the app and a link to the source code on GitHub. If I select Try the App, I'll be taken to the homepage for MyConnect Webhook at myconnectwebhook.sampleapps.docusign.com. This app uses Connect notifications in two example scenarios, monitor envelope status from a bulk send request, and automate workflow based on an elastic signing agreement. If I select Get Started on either one, I'll be automatically logged in with a pre-configured developer account. This pre-configured account is already set up with a webhook listener and a connect configuration. We'll see those two examples in action later on, but for now, I'm going to jump over to the GitHub source link so that we can clone the repository and start setting it up locally with a developer account. I'll copy the link here and then move over to VS Code. After cloning the repository, I'll open the README, which has all of the instructions that I'll need to set up the app. Scrolling down to prerequisites, I'll note that I still have to set up a DocuSign integration key for the app. This integration key will have to be configured with an RSA key pair to use JSON Web Token authentication, and it must include the redirect URI for the app. To do this, I'll visit the Developer Center and sign in with my developer account. Then I'll visit the Apps and Keys page. Here, I'll select Add App and Integration Key. I'll give it a name, then I'll add the redirect URL for the app, which is http localhost 3000 slash auth slash docusign slash callback. Then I'll create my RSA key pair for JWT authentication and copy the private key. Then I'll hit save. Now I'll move back to my project and paste my private key that I just copied into the file config slash docusign underscore private underscore key dot text. Then I'll copy the appsettings.example.yaml file into a new file named appsettings.yaml and fill in all of the required configuration items. I'll need the integration key I just created. That will go in JWT underscore integration underscore key. And I'll also need an impersonation user ID, since JWT authentication allows users to act on behalf of the user provided. I'll take my user ID and paste it in for that value. I'll also add a signer email and signer name. The next step in the README is to create a webhook listener. Since we are working locally, we can set up a public URL for the Connect webhook service to send notifications to using ngrok. On a Mac, you can install using brew install ngrok and run using the command ngrok http 3000, since 3000 is the port that our app will be running on. As you can see here, we now have a secure public URL that will forward incoming notifications to our app at localhost 3000. I'll go ahead and copy this URL for the next step, which is to add our ngrok URL as an authorized host in our development environment. I'll open config slash environments slash development dot rb and paste in the URL I just copied for the variable ngrok host. 
Now that we have our webhook listener, we can move on to creating our DocuSign Connect configuration. This project includes a Ruby script, which makes it easy to create our Connect configuration using API calls. Here in the Ruby script file, all of the configuration details necessary for running the app are already filled in. Since we'll need to authenticate before making DocuSign API calls, the script also utilizes JWT authentication and will use the same configuration details we just filled in in our appsettings.yaml file. After running the script, I should be subscribed to all of the events you see here, and our new Connect configuration will be identical to the one used in the hosted app. To run the script, I'll use the command ruby create connect configuration .rb. As the script runs for the first time, I'll need to grant consent for our app to use the scopes required for making our API calls with JWT authentication. This is a one-time requirement, so we will not need to do this again later on when we log in to use the app. Now, I just need to fill in the prompts. I'll paste the URL generated by ngrok that I copied previously, and add the proper path displayed here. This is the path where our app will be expecting incoming notifications. Then I'll give it the name demo-myconnect webhook. The script was successful, so I'll go to the Connect page in my developer account so you can see what was created. I'll hit Edit on my new Connect configuration named demo-myconnect webhook where you can see what it looks like. Here I could subscribe to even more events or add data to be included in a notification. Now that we have completed all of the necessary DocuSign configuration steps, we can move on to the Installation Steps section. You can follow these instructions in the README to easily run the app using Docker. But for this video, I'll focus on the manual installation instructions. Make sure you are using Ruby version 3.1.2, as noted in the prerequisites. I already have that installed, so I'll move on to using Homebrew to install Redis and PostgreSQL, which is the database we are using for our app. I'll use the commands listed in the README, brew install Redis, then brew services start redis, and finally, redis-server. For PostgreSQL, I'll use the commands brew install PostgreSQL at 14 and brew services start PostgreSQL. If you don't already have Bundler installed, you can do so with the command gem install Bundler, and then we can install our Ruby dependencies with bundle install. Now we need to set up our database with the commands bundle exec rake db create and bundle exec rake db migrate. And since we are using React on the front end, we have to install our node dependencies with the command yarn install. Now that all of our installations are complete, we'll run the app using the command bin slash dev and open a browser to localhost 3000, where we should see the homepage of our app. Now that we have successfully set up our app, I'll run through the two scenarios. I'll click Get Started on the first scenario, where we will be automatically logged in using the credentials in the appsettings.yaml file. If you did not already complete the consent process I showed previously, you will need to use this URL format shown to grant this consent before you can log in. We'll send out a bulk send request and see the progress of the envelopes in real time as our app receives notifications on the events we subscribed to in our DocuSign Connect configuration. I'll go ahead and add a couple of recipients and hit Submit. Now we can see the list of envelopes we are receiving notifications for, and the expected status updates for a common workflow, which would be signing the envelope document. It'll take a few minutes to see our first update, which should be envelope-sent. While we're waiting, we can click on the Behind the Scenes section, which has more information on what's happening in this scenario. Here's the link to the file on GitHub, which shows how to create and send a bulk send request. I want to point out that we are attaching the bulk send list ID as a custom field of the envelopes in the bulk send request. Once the bulk send request is sent, this bulk send list ID is stored along with the email address of each recipient in our database. These are the two pieces of information that we need to identify which envelope a Connect notification is referring to when it's received. As you can see in this screenshot of our Connect configuration, we opted to include the envelope's custom fields and recipients in the data section for each notification. This will allow us to match the notification to the proper entry in our database and update the record accordingly with the correct status. Then that status is displayed on the page. You can also see what other possible events could be triggered based on our Connect configuration. Now that we can see our status of envelope sent, let's go over to our inbox to take action on the envelope. Once I open the envelope, I can switch back over to our app and see the status change to envelope delivered. And now I'll go back and finish signing so that I can see our status change to recipient completed, indicating that the envelope has been signed. 
Similarly, in the second scenario, once I sign my Elastic Template Agreement, the app will wait for a DocuSign Connect notification of Click Agreed, at which point the app will send a sample purchase confirmation, indicating that the app received the notification that I agreed. These are just two examples of how Connect notifications can be used. To learn more about how the DocuSign Connect webhook service could be used in your own integrations, here are some resources. For information on other Developer Center sample apps and how to develop integrations with DocuSign, I recommend checking out the sample apps page, going to Stack Overflow, reaching out to support, or signing up for API office hours. That's it! Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching from our YouTube channel, please post questions and comments below the video or email us at developers at